Hey guys, Lenny Reed, Dynamite Diesel. So, lots of timing questions on P-Pump vehicles. We found a Ford, that uh, Ford chassis, Cummins motor, P-Pump. The motor came from Reviva. Apparently it ran really good once, and then they had to warranty out an injection pump, and then it ran really good after they warrantied out the injection pump. It's had several sets of injectors in it in the last couple of years because he keeps getting told that it's a bad set of injectors. Well, these injectors really don't go that bad. And what happens is when you stand on the gas pedal, it acts like it's just shooting ducks out the tailpipe, just pop, 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 pop. Uh, we actually dynoed it. It makes good power. It's got our injectors in it. It's got a nice little turbo on it. Made like four and I think it was 420, 422. But it didn't drive very good. It ran really bad actually. So what I was stuck on wholeheartedly was just pump timing. And this is six four truck, so the radiator AC condenser, intercooler, all leaned back towards. To get to a Cummins pickup truck, Ram truck, it's normally not near this extensive, but I figured this would be a good way to show you guys the hands-on how to, why we're doing it, how we're doing it, just because we had to remove so much stuff, now you can actually see what I'm doing. So, the first thing that I've done, we've torn the front end apart, as you can see. Second thing, I've got a barring tool on the front of the motor, because with the adapter to go to the transmission, the barring tool hole that we would normally use would, on the passenger side of the motor, there's a barring tool cover, or a hole, a little plastic cover comes out and then you put this in there. Normally that sits down in the, uh, well it goes on the, on the flex plate teeth, we'd get a big extension, like 36 inch long extension, adapt this with a wobbly, run it right up above, lay it on top of the alternator. Then you'd have access to barring the motor over left or right. In behind this cover right here, there's a timing pin. That timing pin's made out of plastic. It looks like this. We'll give you some close-up shots, all this stuff. Little nipple on the end, that goes in the back of the gear when the motor's at TDC zero. That being said, my, my shot mascot dog just showed up with a leash. That being said, when this goes in that gear, you know that the engine's at zero. Then you would measure with the dial indicator how many millimeters of lift you have at zero. So that brings me to the step where I'm at right now, which is I'm going to go ahead and break the pump free from the motor. And then I'm going to borrow the pump over that sharp click pop. That's a really good sound reason why I say that is because whoever set this used good brake clean and they torqued it correctly. Uh, proper torque in the book is 168 pounds. I've heard of guys running them up to 180 just to try and keep them a little bit more snug. Uh, I've never heard of anybody breaking a camshaft, so I can't say that's a bad idea, but book is 168. So now we made a tool. The next tool I'm gonna use, put this one away. So this is a uh, blue point, comes in a kit that I bought from the Snap-on guy many, many, many years ago. Um, this little tool, basically what I did is I ran to the uh, hardware store and I bought a full thickness nut that's the th same thread pitch as the injection pump. And then I just welded a nut to the back of that that's actually threaded by a bolt. And what happens is I'm gonna screw the proper diameter onto the pump Gives me lots of traction there. Then I'm gonna run that in to jam the end of the pump and I'll have total control over the pump. Give me one second, be right back. Now I've already recorded where it was when it came in. Now it's at the camshaft's top. It's gonna to come back down the camshaft. We're gonna find the base of the camshaft here in a second. Right now we're at the base. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my cell phone to take a quick picture when I was young, I could just look and see what all those digits were. Now I'm not, so I gotta take a picture of it. Then I'm gonna zoom in on that picture and it shows me 16, 
I'm at like 16.8, uh, 16.9 millimeters. So now 16.9 is the base of the circle of the camshaft. In order to time this thing, I'm going to set the timing on this engine to, oh, it's got a little S300 turbo, makes 400 horsepower. It's got our stage threes. This is a 215 pump, so dynamically, as rack travel increases, you gain uh, engine timing. So I can be more conservative on this than I could be with the 160, 175, or 180 pump. So I'm going to set this at, uh, well, about 18 degrees. 18 degrees on a 215 pump is going to be 5.91 millimeters. So now I'm going to take that digit there, I'm going to add 5.91, that's going to set me at 18 degrees. One, two, three, four, five, point nine. That's a little bit different, leaning over at this angle, and I've been doing this enough years that it all feels wrong. But again, I'm doing this because it's a good visual for you guys. But uh, it definitely catches me a little off guard when I'm used to doing things a little different. Okay, so what I've done is I just broke this, this uh, pump driver free, and I added 5.9 millimeters to base. So that should put me static timing right about 18 degrees. So one of the most important things about doing this job is definitely going to be your brake clean. Uh, a really good high quality brake clean that evaporates 100% is key. You want to make sure that it's non-chlorinated brake clean. This is Zep. I've only used this for the last four or five trucks. The normal, stuff, the, the normal stuff that I was using was a uh, body tech uh, from Transstar, and I used that for years. I had great success with it, but getting it has been kind of a challenge lately. So, uh, so I've tried this, and it seems to be working out pretty good. I'm driving it myself right now. It hasn't popped free, so I kind of, I sort of trust it, but it's not something I've done a lot. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these bolts that uh, you use for pulling your gear. Set it inside, now I've got a good handlebar. And what I've got to do is I've got to get all of the oil that's on that shaft between the pump gear and the shaft, the camshaft of the pump, I've got to get that 100% out and clean. And the whole time I'm doing this, you can hear oil in there. So the whole time I'm doing this, I want to make sure that dial indicator does not move. Because if it does, I need to go through and I need to reset all this. So give me one second, I'll get a blow gun and do, uh, do the next step. So normally in a Dodge truck, the radiator, intercooler, and all that would be right here. You wouldn't see me doing all this, but I'd have to do it by touchy feel kind of braille. So this uh, this was a really good great way to show you guys how important it is to get that thing clean and critical or uh, critically clean I should say. That being said I did lose about one tenth of a millimeter which is probably going to be about a half a degree of timing so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add that back to it. It would have ran just fine at 17 and a half, 18, 18 and a half degrees. Getting that critical is getting pretty, uh, getting pretty sensitive. And for a truck that has to do what this truck needs to do, uh, we don't need to be within 
a half degree one way or the other but knowing that I want it to start at 18 I just feel better knowing that I'm going to start at 18. Okay so there's a washer that washer I'd recommend that you replace that each time. I do not have a new washer here I've used these things hundreds of times over and over and over. Pump nut you can definitely tell it's been around for about 20 years threads all look good everything looks fine there's one thing I'm gonna do which is I'm gonna use just a little bit of uh, engine assembly lube to lube up the threads inside this pump nut to make sure that I get real proper torque on this pump nut all right so it's it's pretty important that I use this thing sparingly I'm just gonna lube the threads only to make sure that I pull on the threads get good torque but I don't want to get so much in there that it slops all over and ends up uh, being a mess on the side of that camshaft. So, sparingly, lubing up the one side, the face, that actually uh, interferes to the washer. I'm going to lube that up to make sure it doesn't start pulling on that washer. So I don't want to break that washer because it falls down in the oil pan. That's a bad day. So there. Okay, so whether it's superstition or not, I've always done this. I've always done this this exact same way. I set the torque wrench to 75 foot-pounds. And doing this is gonna be kind of a challenge with only one dude the way it's set up. Like I say, normally you'd be at the back of the uh, crankcase and the, the little tiny gear would be in there on your flex plate and that would hold it exactly where you need it. I've got to try and hold this thing by hand. So I might need Matt. Okay, so there's 75 foot pounds. Now that I've got it started, you got to picture a tapered shaft with a tapered gear, and I'm now forcing that gear over that shaft. So the reason why I don't just go straight for 168 is because I want to give it time to set, set, set as I get tighter 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 so now I'm gonna be 125 this would be like 170 this is where you lose skin on fingers by the way 170 Back off torque wrench, because daddy told me to. So my dial indicator's moved about one-tenth of a degree, or one-tenth of a millimeter. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my timing pin. First, I'm going to move my engine to where it's obviously really far off. Now I know I'm not at TDC any longer. I'm going to put the timing pin back in. Well, I got really lucky. So, I was shooting for 18 degrees which would have been 5.91 on top of whatever I had for base. And I ended up with, uh, 10 millimeter. I ended up with about 5.92. So I'm 18, call it 18.2 degrees timing, static. And uh, since this is 215 pump, it'll gain two degrees engine timing for every millimeter of rack after 16 degrees of mill uh, after 16 rack so that's pretty much where this motor should run really 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 good shouldn't shoot any ducks shouldn't run poorly should be great so i'm going to start step one moving the engine around the reason why i do that factory timing pin has a little uh, green ring on it and getting this in and out with that ring on there is very difficult. 
So in my timing kit, I keep one of these timing pins, but I just don't have the, the uh, O-ring on it. So it comes in and out of that hole real easy, just slides. That's my tool. When something's never been timed, there's an indicator. This little star lock sits right behind the timing pin and that wedges, that star lock wedges into the gear case housing. Well, I know that nobody had ever timed this before because that star lock's still there. And you can't really get that star lock in in any normal situation in a normal truck. So you don't need this. Just the O-ring itself has enough friction to hold itself in there. Kind of like when you put your dipstick in your engine, just the O-ring is enough to keep the dipstick in there unless you've got a massive crankcase problem. So now I'm gonna shove this all the way back in, hit the gear, pull it out, and that is properly installed. We're good to go. So I know that I've got 18 and some change for timing, and I'll start tearing this apart and setting things up, putting things back together, and we'll start it here in a few minutes. Um, I really don't want to start this truck with the radiator out because water pump's going to pump water all over. So what we're probably going to end up doing, I do want to run this truck one time before I go to putting everything back together. So I think what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to take the serpentine belt off and we'll start it so it's not driving the water pump and I'll be able to see how it sounds, how it starts, how it idles and what the throttle response is going to feel like. I'm going to run it for less than a minute. So the fact that I'm not going to run water through the block is not going to disturb anything. It's not going to hurt anything. Uh, but before I go to the extent of six hours of putting all this stuff back together and then taking it all apart because I was off by half degree or I had bad math or what have you, uh, I'm just going to do that to, to double check my work. So we'll get on that and uh, be right back. All right, guys. So got the handy dandy torque wrench out. If you don't have one of these, you shouldn't be doing this job. Uh, the delivery valve holder is gonna get torqued to 89 pound feet. So that's what we're doing right now. And I wasn't being sarcastic about the torque wrench. If you don't have a torque wrench, you really shouldn't be doing this job at all. Proper torque saves you from having to do it two, three, four times. And there we go, 89 foot pounds, a three quarter inch wrench, snug up line. Electric tools are really nice, they make things a lot faster, but you can't really feel how much torque you're applying to anything. And after you've been pulling wrenches a few years, you know about what things feel like, so you don't have to torque every single thing. But I've had a lot of mechanics work for me that loved electric tools, and they had a lot of comebacks because they lived on electric tools. Well, you can save yourself time mechanicking by knowing that you've got everything the proper tension. If it's too tight and it breaks a bolt or strips threads, you spend a bunch of time doing it again and fixing it. And if it's not tight enough, and you got stuff falling off, well, you're gonna spend a bunch of time fixing it again for free. So I like to do everything with the electrics, but only to save the last bit for hand or a torque wrench. Just my, just my two cents. Okay guys, Lenny Reed down my these products. So I'm standing by this uh, 6.4 Ford that's been Cummins conversioned. Apparently this thing's been to like 10 shops. And guy came in wanting the injectors to be warranted out again. Well, apparently this thing's had like five sets of injectors shoved in it in the last couple of years because it ran very poorly. So I walked into our showroom the other day and he's kind of crying the blues to the guys. Uh, and I'm like, what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? I'm like, mm, it's not the injectors. What injectors in it? Well, it's got your stage whatever's in it. So instantly, I know that it's not the injectors. Number one, and I told them this. I said, even if they weren't our injectors, I'm telling you right now, it's not the injectors' fault. How are you so confident? Well, because how many sets of injectors you put in in two years? Uh, like five. Okay. And you sent your injectors back in here for warranty. How many times? once do we find anything wrong no okay we're not lying about that there's something else wrong and i'm sure that it's got something to do with pump timing 
well, it's been to so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so. Two of the shops have actually consulted with me and I've tried to give them guidance on what to do and what to look for and things like that. Well, the truck has just been in too many people's hands. So the point of this video is a couple things. Number one, find somebody you trust and stick with them because by the time they go through troubleshooting and trying to diagnose things and then you walk away from them because you're frustrated because you've done some sort of a Frankenstein kind of project, well, all of the, guy, all of the knowledge that that guy learned that you paid him to learn, you're now just wasting it because he's never gonna help the next mechanic in line. So find somebody you trust, stay there, stick it out. Number two, P-pumps. Not all P-pumps are the exact same, period. So when somebody says, what do you have for an injection pump? I want you to say this. I have a 215, I have a 180, I have a 175, I have a 160, or whatever you have. Don't say P-pump. That's not a valid term. That's like me asking you, what do you drive? And you say, a Chevy. Chevy Chevette, Chevy Corvette, Chevy 2500. There's a lot of Chevys, there's a lot of P-pumps. The third point, and this is getting to be more and more valid every single day. P-pumps are extremely expensive. The camshaft that's in that pump, if I go and buy one from Bosch today with our discount, we're hovering around $1,000 for a camshaft right from Bosch. Plungers and barrels. If I buy plungers and barrels, also very expensive. 215 plungers are totally different than the flat tops in the 160, 175, and 180. Everybody wants the Holy Grail, which would be the 215 pump. And as I discovered today, <clears throat> this truck has been a challenge. But we figured it out. It took us yesterday and today. Matt's got the thing put back together, radiators in it. All of this stuff had to come out of it so we could get really good access to it and be mobile around this thing and try and figure it out. So what I did is I looked at the top of the plunger and I saw that it was a 215 style plunger, assuming that it was a 215 style pump, which is what the customer was told it was. I went off of the timing chart for a 215, set the pump timing. Before I set it, I double checked to see where it was and it should have been right around 19 and a half degrees. And I thought, well, this truck wouldn't run this way at 19 and a half degrees, so I must have done bad math. So I saved my notes, kept my notes, broke it free, brought it back around, set it to about 18 degrees timing. And at that point, it ran worse. So instantly, I'm a little frustrated because I know that I must have misset this timing. Well, I double checked my work, didn't misset the timing, it set at 18 degrees. At that point, I had <clears throat> at that point had another obligation that I had to go tend to, and then I called the customer that owns the truck, told them that I was struggling with a few things, told them what I'd found and what I'd fixed already, and told them that I'd like him to come out to the shop, look at the truck with me, so we can make decisions on what we need to do. This injection pump's been pulled off and sent out to the person that that actually rebuilt the motor, and the injection pump was warrantied once. He said it ran pretty good after that for 3,000 miles and it started to run poorly again. All the information and none of the answers. So we're eating lunch, standing here kind of looking at this thing and I asked Matt, grab a, grab a, a marker, run to the dry erase board and start writing down digits. <clears throat> so what I did is I grabbed my handy dandy little tool and I spun the camshaft and the pump around and every 90 degrees, I would yell out a digit. Then I went to the dry erase board. I drew a diagram of what the injection pump looked like based off of zero being the center point and X amount of millimeters out every 90 degrees. So I had a general idea what the profile of the cam looked like. Well, after I did that, it, I could plainly see that it was a 160 style cam. That's the problem. These trucks are getting to be 20 years old, 20 plus years old, and these guys that are rebuilding these pumps are just throwing whatever parts they have at these pumps and it's turning your truck and this truck and every other truck into a big mess. So we are coming out with the actual complete turnkey pumps here pretty soon to alleviate problems like this. It'll be timing chart included. Everything's going to be blueprinted. It'll make things pretty easy. 215 plungers and barrels. They'll pump up to 900 cc's of fluid. They're going to come with a quick rate camshaft just to take and give these old trucks, these old 20-year motors, 
uh, some technology and some durability, some reliability, and some predictability. Because today, I'd be willing to bet this guy's at least $6,000 into troubleshooting through all the different shops that he's been through. And it took us a day and a half, and I've been working on these things a long time. It took us a day and a half to kind of figure out what was wrong. So, uh, you know, it may not be cheap to buy a new injection pump, but it might be the best alternative if you've recently bought a used truck and you can't get the thing to run right. Soon, very, very soon, like within a week or two. Uh, actually, within a week, we'll be testing our injection pump, and you'll see videos posted on that. And after that, once we, uh, once we get those videos out, we're going to release the part number, and you'll be able to buy one at retail. We'll have those available for our jobbers, and we'll have them available for the WDs as well. So anyway, Lenny Reed, Dynamite Diesel Products. And my uh, my friendly Ford with the uh, 5.9 P-Pump in her. So, uh, yeah, you guys have a good day. Thanks, bye.